Welcome back to part three of the procedural rock tutorial series. This is part of the magic market series in which we created the environment assets. So in the last part, we finished up our rock generator tool and we now have geometry coming out of our rock generator. We're no longer going to really be adjusting our rock generator. We're only going to be changing the way that we feed attributes into it. But for now, in this tutorial, what we're going to be doing is generating our displacement maps. So we want to take our high res rocks, bake out a displacement map and use that displacement map on our low res geometry. The idea being you take your high res and you ray the attributes down onto your low res using the low res's UVs. What that'll do is give you a displacement map that you can use. So we're going to get straight into it and create this displacement map. In Houdini from where we left off last, we're just going to jump up a level and we can hide our rock gen tool. So this is our geometry node over here. We're going to create two new geometry nodes. The one is going to be our low res geo and the other one is going to be our high res geo. So as far as I know, this is the best way that I came up with. There may be a different way to do this, but this worked for me. So I'm going to show you the way that I did it. I couldn't really find much in terms of information on how to do this. So this is pretty much entirely my own method. So what I did was I went into each one and object merged in the low res and high res. So object merge in the low res from your rock gen and object merge in the high res. So we just object merge the high res. High res out comes in here. So once we have both of these at the object level, we can go ahead and set up our ROP. So go to the out level. So at our out level, we're going to add a bake texture. And this bake texture is what will generate our displacement and at a later point, our diffuse and roughness. So what we're going to do is we're going to go down over here to UV object. That's going to be our low res. So we choose low res geo. Our high res is going to be our high res geo. Now the output picture, we can put it into our dollar hip forward slash render file. And in here, if you want to make a file called textures, you can. And so there's a particular naming that we're going to do for this. We're going to call this rock underscore. Then we're going to do percentage channel all in caps S underscore percentage open brackets udem D dot R A T. So there's going to be a dot R A T. This percentage channel S will generate the image plane that we need. So you can actually see here in the bottom right where there's displacement, which we will be ticking. It will replace this channel S with ds, right? So it'll be rock underscore ds underscore the udem number. Now we're not actually going to use udems for this, but the other option I believe is ptex. And we're not going to be using ptex either, so we use udem. Now it's not happy just generating a normal texture. So you can leave in udem and it'll just generate it as underscore 1001. So once we have that, we can just say accept. And there's a few things that we need to check. So firstly, we're going to check displacement. Then we can go over to baking. We're also going to increase the cavity distance over here to two. Now our cavity distance just ensures that any of the crevices in our rock are actually picked up when rendering. So once we have all of that, we can say render to disk. And if we go over to our render and scheduler, you can see that here is our current render. So it's taking about 13 seconds, I'd imagine. Yeah, so this one took 12 seconds. It's extremely quick to bake out a texture. So we can take a look at what that gives us. And this is saved as TGA. You can save this as EXR, and I might actually do that. Change this to EXR under images, under targa, change it to EXR. So I'm going to do EXR and just render again. Right, so let's take a look at what this has generated for us. So if we bring this over, you can see that this has generated what looks to be a displacement map. Now you'll notice that there are what look to be artifacts. And so to fix that, we're going to increase our ray bias. So under unwrapping, just change your ray bias to a higher value. Now I believe I used 0.1, but you can change this to a different value. Let's try 0.05. And the goal is to just remove any of those artifacts. So let's render to disk and see how that looks. So as you can see, those artifacts are now gone. And if you take a look at this and compare it to our UVs in Houdini, so let's just go over to our object level, lower res, switch our view to UV, you'll see that these match up. So as you can see there, these both share the same UV islands. 
Great, so now that we know how to bake out the textures, it would be nice if we could hide these. Now there is an issue that you can actually test if you switch these off and go to your out and then say render to disk, it'll throw an error. Now it's kind of inconvenient always having these showing. So what you can do is on your bake texture, go to advanced and under force objects, you just select high res and low res. So holding shift, you can select both of them, except pattern, and now you have them in there. You can also set your candidate objects to only be those two. So now this ROP only calls for low res geo and high res geo, and it doesn't look for anything else, and you can hide them because it will force those objects to be rendered. So if we now render to disk, you'll see that it starts in the scheduler, and once again, you'll have your EXR displacement. So if we want to test what that looks like, we can drop down a geometry node. And in this geometry node, we can just call this display or something. So maybe display geo. In here, we can drop down an object merge and bring in our low res geo. And over here, we can just create a material for it. Let's go over to our material level and let's just drop a principled shader. So we don't really need to touch anything. We'll just go over to displacement and we'll enable texture displacement. We can then go over to the texture path and just choose rock underscore ds underscore 1001.exr. So this is your displacement. That ds means displacement. It'll also generate this rock double underscore 1001.exr and the dot rat file. These dot tgas are from the first render, so you can ignore these, even delete them if you want. But these three over here are all together. So the rock exr, the rock dot rat, and the rock displacement. So you can just choose your rock displacement, go over to the object level, and on your display geo, you can select the material. So open your matnet, select the principal shader. So once you've assigned the principal shader, there's a few changes that we need to make to actually see our displacement. Now it is currently working, but it's not showing up correctly. So go over to your material palette and on this principal shader, and let's also just rename it. So we can rename this to rock displacement and maybe just call it preview. So over here, we're using an offset of minus 0.5. Now minus 0.5 is if the middle value is gray. Our middle value is black. So set this to an offset of zero and then increase the effect scale to one. As you can see, that will add displacement to this lower res rock. If we go up a level, we can see that a lot of the detail of the high res rock is actually displayed. So we can test this if we make a copy of this high res geo over here. And let's just move it next to our low res one, just like that. So they still don't look exactly right. And what we can do is actually just make a few more changes on our material palette. So this rock displacement, let's just set the base color to white. We can also increase its roughness. Then if we go ahead and drop a camera over here, and let's also drop an area light towards the back as well as perhaps an environment light. And then I'll just choose an HDRI over here. We can then go to our render view. And as you can see, we have our two rocks. So I'll just change this one to be slightly more gray as well, maybe a bit less roughness. Now, as you can see, these two look very similar and one is low res and one's high res. If you take a look, this one that's high res has 1.5 million points. This one over here that's low res only has 2000 points, but we're getting something that looks very similar in quality. And it's just based on that displacement map that we've baked out. Now, of course, it's not perfect. There are some details that are lost, but as long as this isn't a hero rock in your scene, these will do just fine. Now, generally for environments, you would have a few hero rocks, and then you'd also have quite a few rocks that have a lower level of detail. So these are perfect for that. You can have low res rocks, that still maintain quite a bit of detail. Now there are smaller details that aren't getting picked up on this rock and you can enable things like tessellation and you can also increase the resolution of the displacement map that's being output. And those two things will help the low res rock achieve the same look as the high res rock. So now that we have these, I'll just rename this one to high res preview. So what we can do now is generate a procedural rock texture and bake it out in a very similar fashion to the way that we baked out our displacement map. And once we have that, we can apply that as well to our low res and then 
feed this entire setup into a top network so it generates variations of rocks that can be saved as USD variants in a single asset. So that's what we're going to be doing in the next few parts. In the next part, we'll be doing the material. So that will be a procedural rock material. And then in the part after that, we'll get into tops. So once again, thank you for joining me. I hope to see you back here for the next part. But that's all for this one. So see you next time. Bye.